Hello, so I'm Hélène Coulon. Today I'm going to present you a paper we published at CC Grid 2020. So the work is entitled Predictable Efficiency for Reconfiguration of Service-Oriented Systems with Concerto. And this is mainly the work done by Maverick Chardet, who is a former PhD student, co-supervised by me and uh, Christian Perez. So today I'm going to present this work because Maverick is no longer a PhD student with us. Um, I am associate professor at IMT Atlantic in France and also partly an INRIA researcher and adjunct professor at uh, UAT in Norway. So the outline of the talk is first to give you an introduction on the reconfiguration, then a short state of the art, and I will present you the main contribution, the concerto reconfiguration model. And I will present you a sub part of the evaluation before concluding on this work. So first of all, we are interested in distributed software systems. So I will give you a very broad definition of it. It is a non-monolithic code made of uh, different modules or components. And in order to build a distributed software system, uh, the idea is to uh, make an assembly of component instances. Uh, and of course, these component instances are going to interact uh, between each other through communications. So in this example, I have a component in type A, which is instantiating and will provide a, a service or a data to uh, an instance of the component B, which is itself providing a service to two instances of the component C. So of course, you have many examples of distributed software systems like master worker architecture, microservices, service oriented, et cetera. So the work I'm going to present today is supposed to be generic to any kind of distributed software systems, but we have evaluated it on service oriented architectures. So of course, when you have a, a distributed software system, you may want to deploy it on a distributed infrastructure. This is the first part of the life cycle of a distributed software. We are interested in ever running and long running distributed systems. Uh, and it means that these systems will need through time some reconfiguration, some management operation, because they may need to add or remove some components or connections and they may need to change their internal configuration. So a reconfiguration could be defined as a set of instructions to move from one state of the system to another. And some example of reasons why we need reconfiguration are, for instance, faults or errors on services or hardware, um, some dynamic constraints like energetic or security constraints, some dynamic improvement of performance of the services, or again, some dynamic upgrades. So in this work, we are interested in two main aspects. The first one is the efficiency of the reconfiguration. The more efficient is a reconfiguration, the uh, faster we, get, we reach the new targeted configuration. And this is useful when you are facing some dynamic security requirements, for instance, or where you are, when you are facing some frequent reconfigurations, like it will probably be the case in fog and edge computing. Also, by doing efficient reconfiguration, you reduce the disruption time when you are facing some faults or network deconnection. The second goal of the work is to be able to predict the execution time of a reconfiguration so that you can take better decisions on two main questions. The first one is when to perform the reconfiguration and the second one is how to schedule concurrent reconfigurations. So a short state of the art. Uh, we are interested in two main concepts in this work. The first one is the concept of life cycle. So when you need to reconfigure a distributed software system, you need to uh, model uh, the life cycle of each component. So you have many contributions in the literature that uh, tackle the life cycle aspect. So some solutions offer a fixed life cycle like uh, Tosca, Deploy, Where, Smart, Frog, or Engage. Uh, the advantage is that it is easier to use, but less flexible. 
And you have some subset of solution that offer a way to program the life cycle of each component. This is the case of IOLUS in the academic literature, but also some um, production tools like, for instance, Ansible, which is a DevOps configuration tool. Uh, the, the advantage is that it is more flexible. You can write the life cycle you wish for a given component, but it is more difficult to use. So one example here, we have a database and a web server. This is what we want to deploy, for instance, or to reconfigure. Um, each one is deployed on a different machine. And the life cycle is typically, well, I could install, configure, start the service or prepare the service for the database. And similarly for the web server with some additional uh, uh, milestones in the, in the life cycle, like downloading the website contents or configuring the firewall. The second concept of interest in this work is the concept of dependencies. So you can have four level of dependencies when handling uh, the life cycle and the reconfiguration of components. And I will explain these four levels through examples. So here we have an example with three types of components, A, B, and C. And the arrows uh, represent the life cycle of the components or some instructions to perform, for instance, to deploy it. And you can see that two instances of C are deployed or reconfigured on two different nodes, node one and node two. So the first level of dependency that is offered is the one offered by Ansible, for instance, and you actually do not declare any dependency, but you give a procedural execution order. So you say, I want to deploy A, then B, then C, or I want to reconfigure A, then B, then C. And because C is deployed on multiple nodes uh, simultaneously, we are able to perform this uh, deployment uh, in parallel. So this is the first level of dependency. Of course, you can improve uh, this uh, dependency granularity uh, by expressing some dependencies at the component level. So instead of giving a procedural execution order, A, B, and C, you give the dependencies. So I say B depends on A, and that's it. And so I can deduce that uh, C does not depend on B, so I am able to run simultaneously the deployment or the reconfiguration of B, C on the node 1, and C on the node 2. And this is the level of dependencies offered by Deployware, the basic usage of Tosca, and Engage. So you can go a bit further and offer some dependencies at the lifecycle level. So instead of saying B depends on A, I will say B3 of B depends on A3 of A. And by specifying this kind of dependencies at a finer grain uh, level, I'm able to run simultaneously A1, B1, A2, B2, and A3 before a synchronization point, a dependency is uh, needed between A3 and B3. And so you reduce again the, the overall execution time of the reconfiguration. And finally, there is a fourth level, which is the one we offered in Concerto, where we add uh, some dependencies within the lifecycle of a component. So we say that B1 depend, uh, B2 depends on B1, but B3, B4, and B5 uh, have no dependencies, so we are able to run them simultaneously. So this adds a parallelism level within the components. So you can see that the finer the dependencies granularity is, the better is the efficiency of the reconfiguration. So now I'm going to present you the Concerto model. So Concerto is made of the first concept, which is the concept of control components. A control component is written by the component developers, and you can see it as a replacement of a readme file or an ad hoc script to explain how to install, how to update, how to uninstall a component. 
the idea is to have a structured way of uh, specifying the control components, uh, which is a kind of a life cycle of the components, and we call it an internal net. So it is a bit like a state machine. You have some places like uninstalled, installed, running, and you have some transitions between, between places to move from one place to another. And these transitions will actually perform some real concrete actions like installing some packages or pulling some Docker images, et cetera. Um, and this represents the life cycle of the component. In addition to this, we have some interfaces, uh, which are the, yeah, the interfaces with the outside of the component. So first we have use ports represented by these semicircles. Um, so a use port is bound to a subset of the life cycle. And it means that this sub part of the life cycle is using something from another component. So in this example, we are using the IP address of the database and the service of the database. And you have provide ports uh, bound to a subset of a life cycle, in this example, to the running place of the server. And it means that we are providing a service to other companies. And finally, we, we have one additional interface that we call a behavior. The idea is to associate each transition to a given behavior. In this example, we have two behaviors, the green one install and the red one suspend. And so it is some kind of abstraction that, so that we know that the server can be installed or suspend and we don't have to look inside to look at the precise transitions that are executed for each behavior. So a control component is quite easy to write. We have implemented Concerto in Python. Uh, the idea is to create a, an object inheriting from the components uh, object. And you can declare the places with some string identifiers, the initial place where you start uh, the component from nothing. Some behaviors. So in this example, we have two behaviors, install and suspend. And you are going to define some transitions with an identifier and then a starting place, a destination place, the behavior that is associated to this transition and a function. And in the function of the transitions are performed the concrete actions like SSH connections, running some commands, et cetera. And finally, you declare the dependencies so in this example, we have two use ports and one provide port, and each one is bound to a subset of a life cycle. So now the second thing we need to perform reconfiguration is a reconfiguration language. So a reconfiguration language usually is made of adding or removing some components and connect or disconnect some components. In Concerto, we have two more operations. The first one is to push a behavior within a behavior queue of the components. And the second one is a wait instruction. So I will explain this through two examples. So you remember that a control component is typically written by a component developer. A reconfiguration program is typically written by a reconfiguration developer. So um, she could be a, a DevOps engineer or a system administrator. Um, okay, so now we take a very simple example of a deployment. So we are going to add a server, the first instruction of the reconfiguration program. The second one is to add a database and to connect both of them together through their compatible ports. So we get something like this. And then we say, okay, I want to push the install behavior within the server and the deploy behavior within the database. So what happens is that this instruction will push the behavior, the corresponding behavior within the behavior queue of each component. And this instruction is non-blocking instruction. So uh, this introduces additional asynchrony or parallelism. Each component will try to apply 
its set of behaviors simultaneously until it reached some uh, dependencies, so some synchronization points with other components by the mean of connections. And finally, we have one instruction, which is to wait the server. So it means that we wait that the server ends its uh, set of behaviors. So in this example, um, the idea is that uh, the, the operational semantics of Concerto is that the token will move from places to transitions like in a state machine. And within each transition, some concrete operations will be performed to actually uh, uh, execute the deployment of the configuration. So, um, and so I will illustrate a synchronization point. In this example, the server ends its last green transition, but the server is not able to enter the running place because this running place actually need uh, the database service, which is not ready. So as soon as the database reaches its running place, then the connection will be activated and the server will be able to reach the running state. Another example is a maintenance program. So now I want to maintain the database. So I need to push in the database the maintain behavior and then deploy it again. <clears throat> and I also need to suspend the server that is using the database and to install it again. So here is another example of automatic coordination made by Concerto. <clears throat> in this example, the database will not be able to start the blue transitions because the server is currently using the service. And so the token cannot leave the burning place. As soon as the server <clears throat> reach a transition or a place where it is, not it is not using anymore the database service, the connection will be deactivated and the database will be able to start the blue transitions, etc. <clears throat> So in short, a reconfiguration developer write a reconfiguration program and all the coordinations needed to, between the components within a reconfiguration is handled uh, automatically by Concerto by its operational semantics. So the second contribution of a paper is to be able to predict the execution time of a reconfiguration program, so a concerto program. The inputs are the reconfiguration program and the set of control components and the time estimation for each transition. So remember that the transitions are the, the steps in which are performed concrete actions. So this is the exec execution time of interest in this work. And so we translate the execution of a reconfiguration program into a dependency graph, a weighted dependency graph, where the arcs representing the transitions are weighted with the execution time of the transition. And the idea is simply to compute the critical path, so the longest weighted path uh, within the dependency graph, to find the theoretical execution time of the reconfiguration. So we have evaluated this work on some synthetic use cases that I will not present in this talk. The synthetic use cases are interesting because they uh, explore uh, very different kinds of possible reconfiguration and it illustrates in which cases Concerto is interesting compared to uh, the literature. Uh, today, I'm going to present you the evaluation on a real use case. So it, it is a use case extracted from uh, a multi-region deployment of OpenStack that was presented at the OpenStack Summit in 2018. So the initial state is to have a centralized um, database uh, and we want first to decentralize the database by uh, deploying a Galera cluster. So it means we need to back up the data to restart the database so that it becomes a master node and to deploy some worker nodes. 
And the second scenario is to make a scaling of the decentralized database by adding some uh, additional workers. So this experiment is reproducible. You can find a link on the, the slides. So we have evaluated it on a, one cluster of the Grid 5000 experimental platform. Uh, so on the left, you can see the results for the decentralization case. So we move from a centralized database to a gallery cluster of databases made of three, five, 10, and 20 nodes. And you can see the execution time of the reconfiguration. So as expected, um, we have a better efficiency compared to, I, to Ansible. Uh, because Ansible is able to only perform uh, parallel uh, reconfiguration when you have the same component deployed on different machines, which is not the case in the decentralization. Um, but we also win some time compared to Iolus, which is the closest work in the literature. The most important thing is to is that we were actually able to predict with a very good precision the execution time of the reconfiguration. You can see that by the dashed bars on this figure. On the right, you can see the result of the scaling scenario. So as expected, we win less compared to Ansible because the scaling is typically the kind of scenario that Ansible is able to perform quite efficiently. And you can see again that we were able to predict the, the execution times of the reconfiguration. So to conclude, um, I've shown you that we actually need uh, some software engineering practices when handling reconfigurations. And this is the main purpose of the DevOps community. Um, in this work, we tackle the problem of efficiency and execution time prediction for reconfiguration in order to reach quickly the new state and to reduce the disruption time. I've presented you Concerto and a subpart of its evaluation. And the perspective of this work is first to automatically generate a Concerto program from a given goal. And also to use Concerto to reconfigure some cyber physical systems and edge devices. So we have a PhD opportunity on this topic. So do not hesitate to contact me if you want to, to know more about this. So thank you.